welcome back to this continuing series on painting Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soul Wars. And for the Stormcast Eternals, I had to choose a color scheme. I wasn't really happy with the one that Games Workshop has, so I came up with my own and painted two miniatures in different colors. In fact, I put this image up on Twitter and asked my Twitter followers which one they liked. And amazingly, it came back about 50-50, but I decided to go with the one on the left. That's the one I thought was a little bit more interesting. So once I was happy with that color scheme, I was ready to start painting the rest of the miniatures. Of course, the first thing to start with was painting all the gold areas. And I'm using Retributor Armor for that. It gives me a nice gold color. And I'm painting all this in a big batch to get them over and done with as quickly as possible. Now I've established my color scheme, I'm doing the units in blocks. So I've got the Sequitors. There are eight figures. I have to uh, repaint this one a little bit, which was the other scheme I didn't choose. And there's another one over there. So eight figures at once. And I'm just putting down the colors mass production style. So starting with all the gold, which is the easiest, and then I'll wash all the gold and then start blocking in all the base colors. One of the good things about the color scheme I've chosen is that I can put this ink wash on quite roughly because the rest of my colors are dark and so I'll be painting over all these areas that I'm splashing onto and it can be good when you're applying your colors to remember what colors are going on in the other areas because it may mean that you don't have to be very neat as you can see I'm just blocking in the colors I blocked in the dark red and this is black mixed with a little bit of olive green to give it a sort of slight greeny tinge. Um, I put on the black and the silver on the shield. You can see that the cloak or skirt needs another coat. Sometimes you can get away with just the one coat but depending on the thickness of the paint you might want to give that a, a second coat. Really if you're doing a really rough job you can see that um, if the paint is quite thin it does natural highlights itself when you put it on the uh, on the figure but I want to make this quite good quality so I'm going to do another coat on here and then do highlights. So the next thing to do is just finish a little bit more base coating in there, give this another coat and then I'll be ready to give it some washes. The first thing to do is get some Agrax Earthshade at the brown wash and wash all the parchment areas. That defines them quite nicely. That was originally painted with a Shabti bone and then now washed. Then I get some null oil and wash the silver areas, which are mostly just the uh, ends of the weapons and this decoration on the shields. That picks out the detail nicely. As you can see, once the base colors are neatly painted in, the miniatures are looking pretty good. And in fact, you could take them to the table at this point. That's a nice tabletop standard paint job. But of course, you can see the difference when you do do the extra work and do the highlighting and details. I'll start with Stormhost Silver and highlight all the gold areas. This is a bit tedious because there's a lot of highlighting to do and a lot of gold areas. So just get into it and do it neatly. Just highlighting the very sharp edges of the armor where you think the light would hit. And especially on the upper areas of all the spots on the armor. Just picking out the fingers there, just the knuckles of the hand things like that, the tips of the feet armor, and this brings the armor to life. Next I start highlighting the skirts and I've added a little bit more of that olive green to my dark mix. Just so I've got a slight greeny tinge and this is just neat edge highlighting, a little bit of uh, lightening up of the darker folds and then just making the tips a little bit lighter. You can always go back to your blend on your wet palette to blend things in smoothly. But it's very easy to see which parts of the miniature need highlighting because the folds are very sharp.
Just go a little bit lighter on those extreme edges. You can use the edge of the brush, of course, to do those sharp highlights. I also find it's good to sometimes run a highlight along the bottom of a skirt or cloak. Next it's on to the red. And now I'm using a straight red on top of my red and black mix to highlight those folds in the same way. Just doing that nice and neatly. And it's very easy with these miniatures. The folds are very well defined. And then I'm mixing a little bit of white for an even lighter highlight. So there's just two levels of highlight here to really make those red fabric folds pop. Sometimes a little bit of extreme highlighting really makes a figure stand out nicely. So you, you can see I've gone very light on just the tips of these skirt folds and along the bottom of the skirt. And it really makes things pop. That little extra little bit of contrast just improves the look of the miniature from a distance. Finally, here's another little trick, which is to do a little highlight around the edges of graphics like this on a shield. And there we have it. After a little bit more detail work, just painting that little flask at the hip and a few other little details and highlights. I've also added some mud and grime along the bottom of the skirt as well. Uh, in addition to the battle damage, it makes the figure look a little bit more lived in. And that's it for that unit, the Secretors. And that's the largest unit in the Stormcast army. And as I usually do, I work back from the largest units to the smallest units. I'm really happy with this color scheme. It's kind of dark, but it's also a little bit mysterious and monk-like. It's looking pretty good. There's a bit of battle damage in there. With a bit of silver, I've put some scrapes on the shield and on the armor. Okay, onwards and upwards.